looks like it came out of left field. And uh, I think it's pretty ballsy yeah. for the UFC to put Snoop on air, uh, smoking weed and drinking gin and juice. How'd that come about? <laughs> <laughs> so I just got a call from, from Craig Grisari, and, and I'm, I'm guessing it's, I know Dana has a good relationship with Snoop, and uh, and they these guys are just creative about bringing in, you know, different looks. You know, like you guys. I mean, <laughs> that's a great marriage in itself. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, they know your character. They know Jim's a character, and and they're like, hey, it'd be a it'd be a good match. So uh, that I just kind of got the call, and hey, would you be interested in doing this? It was pretty quick little turnaround. Where, like, yeah. I got a call and said, hey, let's give it a shot, see how it goes, and then you know we can talk details later. And uh, and everybody's been loving it, man. Yeah. People love this new cast. It's, it, and he here's the here's the thing that you get. You get Snoop is not completely ignorant to the sport. He loves fighting. He's been a fan, et cetera, but he's still just, you know, an average, you know, fan that's, that's watching. And so you get an interpretation of somebody that is calling it exactly what they see. Like they right. see a guy laying on his back getting kicked in the leg and like, what the fuck is he laying on his back getting kicked in the leg? That's a good so Snoop Dogg, like, Uriah. Yes, it is. <laughs> 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 you know, versus, versus, oh, well, you know, he's probably going to, you know, sit up here and drive for the leg and try to do a half guard. And, you know, it's just like you, you, you start to remember like, oh, yeah, this is how this looks to the person that is not necessarily trained, trained, trained professional. So it's good to have that, that back and forth. And he's not afraid to, to say some funny ass stuff. <laughs> like to take the booty position or, uh, you know, whatever he, he spent on him. I don't think spent's a word, but, uh, <laughs> it he, is now. he's like, Oh yeah. man, he just spent on him. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to start using that during the, uh, the Fox analyst stuff. He's basically, now, Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was going to ask you, man, did you catch any slack for, uh, for Snoop being disrespectful to, I know he said some stuff about DC, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to quote him when he said it. Did he say crying like a bitch? Did he say that? Chris, the producer, I think you get me the right, quote. But he didn't say it on the show. Well, if he didn't say it, I don't want to make up shit. I could have swore he, he said that. Did, he probably. He probably did say it on his yeah. show. Who yeah. knows? I mean, I here's the thing. I don't know what what. I'm sure Snoop has yeah, caught flack. Yeah. All the time about all sorts of shit throughout his whole life. Yeah. I don't know if he really cares. If he really. Uh, <laughs> if he really cares, yeah. So I mean, I mean, DC's my boy. I send him a, a message, you know, tell him to keep his head up, etc. But I mean, you know, you know how the real world is. You can't, <laughs> you can't hinder how people, That's right. you know, how people react. So I, I don't know if he did say that or not. Uh, but if he did, I'm sure he's getting flack for it. Yeah. He shouldn't be saying that. But he's also bo- real good buddies with John Bones Jones. Oh, well, there you go. That makes sense. So it's like, you know, he's always Jones this, Jones that. I guess they're they're buddies. So, uh, you know, I, well, I the the one thing that you're getting with the Snoop cast is zero, like, you know, it's not being uh, filtered dumbed down at all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah. Is so it is it fun to yeah, explain yeah. to somebody? Like when you're, when you're commentating, is it fun to talk? Because that really is how regular people watch the fight. It's a bunch of guys in a room usually who don't, can't talk about it like a yeah. commentator who are just going, why the fuck is he getting, he's getting kicked? Just yeah. using very, <laughs> very, uh, you know, novice and casual terms. So is it fun for you to kind of talk to somebody like that without talking to another analyst? Like just talking to somebody who's enjoying the fight? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole thing with that is, is... You know, you, it, it brings you back to the, the reality of what we're watching. Like, you can, you can, you know, dumb down or you can make something as complicated as you want it. Like, oh, what he has here is he's got a uh, closed guard position. As he opens the guard, he's going for the plot or this and that. And, like, you know, and, and a lot of people at home are, you know, why is he laying on his back? He's just squeezing onto him, you know? So there's, a, there's obviously levels to this thing, and, and you're getting two different interpretations and a little explanation but uh, but Snoop's learning quickly. He he's learning he's learning uh, learning quickly, and, and we've also been naming moves off of him. <laughs> so anything he knows the name of, I'll start naming it after him. Like there's a Snoop one leg back trip. 
<laughs> and anything spinning is now a snoop move because I got him on video in the cage doing a spinning move with his shirt off. And so <laughs> we, pretty much everybody's been stealing his moves now. So ever since he spent in the cage, now everyone else is spinning. <laughs> Does he smoke as much as it seems he smokes, Uriah? <laughs> <laughs> right, the it's like a, the yep. Snoop spinning back fist, the Snoop spinning heli, the Snoop copter kick. <laughs> I got uh, caught with a smoked. Snoop spinning back fist my first fight. I got caught with a few Snoop spinning back fists. I never called Dude, him that before. Got, you, you almost got caught in the rematch with that. I remember what do you mean almost? He whacked me with that shit. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't go down though. Damn right I didn't, Uriah. Fuck yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Have you smoked pop with him yet? Have you gotten high with Snoop? I got contact high the first time, yeah. like I, I was, and I had a, a short time to go pack my stuff and and uh, and catch my flight. And I kept getting distracted in my room. I was like trying to pack my shit. I only had like three things to put in my suitcase, <laughs> and it took me like thirty minutes because I kept getting distracted by my phone or I get distracted by that. I'm like, okay, I'm definitely high as fuck right now <laughs> on the suitcase. But what? that was that was the first time they let him smoke in the room, and then it seeped into the arena. And so then they, they couldn't, uh, <laughs> then they said no more. So now he just, you know, takes his breaks and heads down to the trailer. That is amazing. That just, he's made a yeah. complete life. And great job. Yeah, that's, that's a fun job if you smell pot, is to, is to, to do that. Just, and not have to worry about it, saying anything that's going to bother people. He doesn't really give a shit. He don't give a shit, obviously. That's what makes it so fun to watch, though. He, he said something about Cormier crying. Yeah, he said something like John Jones made him. His point was that he thought John had kicked well, Cormier. Cormier had kicked John when he was down. Well, Chris, the producer, has what he said. Yeah, it was just an interview with TMZ, and he was like, "How about John Jones? He had Cormier crying like a bitch." You know, he just All made right. a comment. Well, I mean, he is his friend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. and he thought that Cormier had kicked John when he was down by criticizing when they were off. When John was out, but that was all part of their back and forth too. You know, I mean, it, it, that, that I don't think he was yeah. doing that, but but I get why you think that if you don't, you know, if you're not 100 percent with the backstory, you think he's just kicking a man while he's down. Yeah, I don't like nah, watching man. fighters I mean, cry. It, it, here's, here's the deal: Cormier, Cormier, let it all hang out, crying. Good for him. I mean, I, they were talking a lot of flack about Rogan interviewing him, but you know. I don't know. I didn't even know that you don't interview people after they've been knocked out. I've never even thought about that. That was Joe's. Um, that was I Joe's. I was decision. not aware of the whole situation. Yeah, Joe actually said that he wanted. He didn't want to. He broke his own rule. But again, he just got caught up in the moment. It wasn't a big, like he wasn't being a dick. He just he just saw him there and just wanted to grab him because there was this this moment. Um, and yeah. he, he wrapped it up very quickly. I think when he realized Daniel was out of it, you could see he wrapped it up. Oh, okay, thank you. Joe didn't harp on it. Joe didn't try to get a moment yeah, out of it. No. He, uh, I think people are being too sensitive out of that. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, they just fought in front of millions of people, and there's emotion there. It, it is, you know, it is what it is. And then on the other side, John Jones actually was was pretty classy in what he said. You yeah, know? amazing. I thought after all that, yeah, he which was... is great because I know that I I would heard that Cormier during after Jones had his first like fall out of the the fight because he got in trouble, and I heard Cormier had given Jones kind of a pep talk. Like, hey, man, you know, yep. you're representative of our community and you can hold your head high and, and things like that. So, I mean, there's always – I always had that with Cruz, too. We had our bitter rivalry, but we also had moments where we were, you know, helping each other out. So, <clears throat> it's, it, was, it was a good, healthy thing. But, I mean, again, you, with, with Snoop, you're getting a fan, a friend, somebody that's, that's picking a side, not afraid to pick a side, you know. And he picked John Jones' side. He's his buddy. So, I mean, he said something – I mean, can't censor that guy. Sure, you know. Also, Uriah, um, when yeah. when guys when guys get when they lose and people are making a big deal about uh, DC crying, sometimes it's not about being emotional. So I don't know if if you've dealt with this personally, but when you get concussed, one of the side effects is that you cry. I mean, it's like it affects. That's how it affects the body. Not for everybody, but definitely for a lot of people. Yeah. So that's part yeah, of I it. Mean, that's probably a reason why Joe doesn't want to um, interview him also, because they might even know what the hell they're blubbering about. You know what I mean? Yeah, who, you know, some you know people people would all do different things. Who knows? You know, you guys might start singing. I remember one time this guy brought this. <laughs> I start singing. It's true. One time at Longo's, this uh, this one of the fighters brought a. He was watching a dog for his. Um, uh, I don't know if it was for his mother or something. So he brought the dog in and. And then he sparred, and, and he got, and he had a bit. He got concussed, you know, had a hard time. And he's 
insisting he doesn't know whose fucking dog that is. He didn't bring that dog there. And they had to show him on the video of the, the, the film of him, uh, the, the cameras of him walking in with the fucking dog. He's insisting it's not his dog. Jesus. He's saying, call my wife. The guy was divorced. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're not even married. So you listen, man, when guys get, when they get knocked out, they have a concussion. Yeah, 